Hi, this is BK Hobby, and today we'll continue the video series about OpenHab Basics. In previous videos in this playlist, I showed you how to install OpenHabian onto a brand new Raspberry Pi, how to keep your version up to date, and how to set up Visual Studio Code with the OpenHab extension, which is my preferred method to modify the OpenHab configuration files. If you haven't watched those videos yet, I will link to the full OpenHab playlist in the video description below. So now that we have an OpenHab system set up, we need to talk about some of the nomenclature and the system components of OpenHab, and we need to understand how these components work together. In this video, I will begin to introduce some of the basic building blocks of the OpenHab configuration. There is a lot of information to cover, so I will split this up into smaller sections and give examples for each component. So you can follow along and try this on your own system. In the end, we'll build a simple automation into the system I set up in previous videos, piece by piece, as I explain each topic, and we'll end up with a fully working system that you can extend on your own. So let's get started. This diagram shows a big picture of the basic OpenHab configuration components. Even though it may seem complicated at first, I'll explain each component one by one and give examples so you understand what they do. Then we'll bring it all together with this slide again, showing a full path for controlling an automation device using OpenHab. We'll start with the OpenHab components shown in the object section. These interact with the actual hardware components in your home automation system. The most basic component or concept of OpenHab 2 is a thing. Things for OpenHab are simply home automation objects it can interact with to get or get data from. For example, a Philips Hue light bulb is a thing which OpenHab can control, turning it on or off, setting its color or brightness. A home automation sensor like my Node MCU cube pictured here is also a thing which provides data like temperature, humidity, or motion events to OpenHab. OpenHab can control many different things, including smart TV's volume, channel, or source. And even the sun and moon are things that provide data like sunrise, sunset time, sun elevation, or the moon phase. All of which can be used within OpenHab to control other things. For example, turn on the living room's constants when the sun begins to set. Everything you add to your OpenHab configuration should have at least one channel to control a feature or get data from it. Otherwise, it would be pretty useless. For example, a Hue light bulb will have one channel to control its color and another channel to control the color temperature. A smart TV will have several channels for things like volume, TV channel, input source, picture adjustment, or guide interaction. I will note that there is a specific type of channel on some things called trigger channel. We'll skip those for now, but you'll see them later on when we set up the sunrise sunset events later in the series. So how does OpenHab interact with actual things? It does so through the use of bindings. OpenHab bindings are plugins that allow it to talk to these external devices. OpenHab has hundreds of bindings available currently and even more in development, but comes with no bindings installed out of the box. So you have to install them yourself. Now, I will show you how to install bindings using two different methods, the paper UI, as well as configuration files, and explain the pros and cons of both ways. So the first way I'll show you how to install bindings is via paper UI. So if you go to your OpenHab start page, like this one, we'll click on paper UI. And in paper UI, you want to click on the add-ons section, and within the add-ons window, click on bindings. Now one thing I mentioned before is how many bindings OpenHab already has. So the best thing to do is take your devices, scroll through this list and see which of these bindings are applicable to your devices. For now, I'll show you two examples of how to install a binding. The first one is the Astro binding. If you click on the binding name, it will take you to this documentation website, which is a great reference for exactly what the binding does, what things it supports, and what channels it has available for you. Okay, so the easy way to install a binding is using this paper UI and clicking the install button. Once you do that, OpenHab will download the binding from the internet and install it. And it's just that easy. Now the Astro binding is installed. But here's the problem. Unless you back up your configuration, you will have to do this installation process every time you reload OpenHab. So I prefer to install my bindings using configuration files. And in the previous video, I showed you how to install and set up Visual Studio Code so you can edit these configuration files. So for installing bindings, we'll go into the services folder, 
and click on the addons.config file. And you will notice that right now this configuration file is completely commented out. And there is a reason for that. Because as soon as I use any section of this configuration file to install OpenHab components, OpenHab will only look at this configuration file on startup. So if I uncomment the binding line, now I need to create a list of the bindings that I want to install using the configuration file. For that, we'll go back to paper UI. And the name of the binding is this portion of the binding name in paper UI. So for the Astro binding, I want to copy Astro and paste it into this file. And the second binding I want to show you how to install is the Q binding. So I'll copy the Q. And now this is my list of the bindings that OpenHab will install on startup. And this is very important because I'm using this configuration file to list what bindings I want OpenHab to use. I will no longer have the ability to install bindings using Paper UI and have them remain during restarts. OpenHab will only look at this line to keep these bindings installed. So right now I only have Astro and Hue listed in this binding list. But you'll notice in my Paper UI, I also have this AVM Fritzbox binding, an IPP binding, NTP and Sonos. Because those bindings are not listed in this configuration line, they will be uninstalled during the next startup of OpenHab. Basically from now on, this line right here defines exactly every binding that will be installed by OpenHab. This is a topic of many forum posts on the OpenHab community forums, so I want to make sure that I make that clear. If you do not list the binding in this list, it will be uninstalled the next time you restart your OpenHab system. But the benefit of using the configuration file is that you can just save a copy of it and if you have to reload OpenHab for whatever reason, you just copy this configuration file over the default file and all your bindings will be automatically reinstalled. So if you have a lot of bindings, configuration files are the way to go. Okay, so now that I've listed my two new bindings here, I'm going to save the file and I will make the OpenHabian Raspberry Pi restart. Okay, now after OpenHabian restarted, I'll hit refresh and I'll go back into the paper UI. And going back into my binding list, you'll notice that the Astro binding is now installed, but the AVM Fritzbox binding that was previously installed is now gone. Scrolling down, you'll also see the Hue binding is installed, but the NTP and Sonos bindings that were previously installed are also gone. Again, that's just the reality of having bindings listed or not listed in this configuration file. If they're on this line, they will be installed. If they're not, they will be uninstalled. The same applies for all the other configuration lines here, but for now we're only dealing with bindings. So you will also notice that now I have an item in my inbox. So when you install a new binding, a lot of them have auto discovery. They will find the hardware things on your network. In my case, the Hue binding found the Hue bridge on my network. And I didn't show you this, but I previously added the sun and the moon things from the Astro binding. They're easy. You just click the checkbox and they show up in your things. The Hue bridge is a little different. So I want to show you the process of adding that thing. But first I'm going to open up the OpenHab log viewer just to show you what's happening as I click the checkbox next to the Philips Hue bridge. So I have the log viewer open and when I click the checkbox next to the Philips Hue to add the thing to my configuration, OpenHab needs to establish a secure connection to the bridge. So when you click this checkbox here, you will see an interaction between OpenHab and Philips Hue in the log viewer. And you will have exactly one minute to run through your Philips Hue bridge and press the button to accept OpenHab as a new user. So let's do that. I'm going to click the checkbox here. I'm going to click the add as thing button. And you will see this error here telling me to press the button on the Hue bridge to set the name and configuration. And as soon as I clicked the button on the Philips Hue bridge, OpenHab was accepted as a user. And now you will see a whole bunch of new things added to my inbox. Those are basically the light bulbs that are on my Hue bridge. So going back to my inbox, 
I can add each one of these to my open half configuration as a thing. And after I've added all those light bulbs, if I go back into configuration and the things window, now you see a lot more things in here. So when, when I click on the thing, Paper UI brings me into a new window, which shows me all of its channels. There are a lot of channels on these Astro things. If I click on this hue color family room lamp, you will notice the two channels I showed you on the slide before, color and color temperature. So now I'm ready to control these things using OpenHab, using the channels that the OpenHab binding provides to me. And in Paper UI, if you click on this control window, you see all of the things and the channels that they provide that are you are able to control right from this window. So for my family room lamp, I can change the color right from here. But this is a very basic user interface, and there are much better ways to control these things, which I will show you in the next videos. But for now, we learn what things are, what channels are, how to install bindings and find things and control their channels in OpenHab. In the next part of the series, I will introduce you to items that you can link to these channels to store or control the thing states. So thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video informative or useful. If you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe. And until next time, this is BK Hobby. Thank you.